Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Shara and today we are going to talk about 10 interior design hacks that have actually changed my life and I believe they're going to change yours too. I think when you have budget constraints or space constraints, those force you to be creative and utilize like pulling those things out of your back pocket to make it work. And that has been my life for so long, not currently, but I learned so many of those hacks and tips along the way when I lived in 500 square feet in the middle of LA, when I lived in 300 square feet in San Diego. I wanna share some of those favorite things, do a little roundup of those, those different tricks that I have and share them with you. Question of the video today is which of these tips and or other tips that I won't mention that I don't know of that you may know, what is your favorite home decor hack? Let's share them all in the comment section below and let me know um, what your favorite is. And if you haven't subscribed, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below, thumbs up this video, and follow on Instagram, at Shara Stevens. Okay, let's jump in to our video today. Okay, so the first hack, are you ready for it? No sew hemming. I don't actually know how to sew. However, I have found several times when it comes to window treatments, I need to make something longer or make something shorter and knowing how to sew would be nice. Well, if you live a busy life and you don't have a sewing machine and you don't have the ability to learn how or the time, don't worry because this hack is going to save your life. When it comes to hanging window treatments, we always recommend you guys need to put your window treatments up to the ceiling. So that's like either an inch below the molding or maybe an inch or two down from the ceiling as high as you can possibly get that rod without it touching the ceiling. You wanna get it really high because when you walk into a room and you see your window treatments, you want the eye to go all the way up to really make the room look impressive and large and a, a great first impression. Sometimes you buy window treatments and you're like, oh, I love the fabric, I love the look, I love the color, but you don't look at the length and you buy it and then you're like, oh yeah, Shara says I should put these to the ceiling. Okay, let's put the rod up on the ceiling, great. Okay, the rod looks perfect. All right, honey, hand me the curtain. Let's put it up on the rod. And then you're like, wah, wah, wah. My curtain is like two inches or two feet too short or a foot too short. When that happens, here's what you do. You go back to Target, you go back to wherever, you buy two of that curtain. If it's a solid color, super simple. If it's a pattern, make sure it's a pattern that's easily replicable. You're gonna take your curtain, lay it on an ironing board, and on the end of it, you're gonna basically put two curtains together. Now I have a whole video about this. It's like, a, I think I labeled it like Ikea curtain, no sew curtain hack. I'm gonna link that. In the video that I'm linking, I'm showing you how to hem your curtains, but it is the same exact application if you wanna lengthen your curtains as well. And so you'll just cut it off, you'll fold it to it so it has a little band and you put that no sew hemming tape inside. You can get that tape at Michael's or at Joann's or on Amazon. And then you literally iron it on it gives it a nice finish and make your the window treatments of your dreams on a budget. It's gonna change your life. Second hack. This is an item that you can purchase and that is contact paper. If you are renting or if you have a kitchen and you would love to remodel it one day, but that day has not come, you need to save for it. It's kind of down the road a little bit. A great quick fix, kind of a band-aid if you will, which is a great application or a great example because it's sticky, is to get this marble contact paper. When I lived in San Diego, we lived in a cute, adorable little adobe house and it had bright blue, kind of like dip and dot, I think is what I called it. It was like dip and dot countertops. They were those Formica countertops and they were awful and I was renting. I We didn't own that house, so what, I'm not gonna replace the countertops in there. So I got this contact paper and all you have to do is make sure it's a clean surface, you lay the contact paper on, and you do have to put your back into it a little bit to make sure all the bubbles are out and everything. But I swear, when you take it off, it does not hurt the countertops, especially if you have tile or something. Let's say you have dark granite or something and you want it to be lighter. This is a huge asset to have in your back pocket because it's inexpensive, it covers the countertop, it's super smooth, and as you can see from this house in San Diego that we lived in, it does not look like contact paper. It looks like actual marble countertops. Now, if you get really close and you put you know, a knife on it, you're gonna see that it's contact paper. It is, you know, not long-term solution, but in the short term, it's gonna do the trick and it's super cheap. Number three, peel and stick tile. I used this in the laundry room at the Kensington house and it worked like a charm. It literally looked like the whole wall was floor to ceiling, beautiful subway tile, and it was amazing. 
They, lit they come in like sheets that look like um, Tetris. You guys ever play Tetris? They are so easy to install and you can get them at Home Depot, you can buy them on Amazon. They're just simple, they simplify your life and they're a great temporary solution to transforming a space. Now you guys know when it comes to tile application, flow is the goal. So what does that mean? That means if you're in a kitchen and you're starting at the where your countertops are, don't stop halfway up the wall for your backsplash. Take it all the way up to the ceiling. You want to elongate the, what you're looking at and the visual kind of display of the tile. It adds such a, an element of class and sophistication to your space. It looks well designed. And I, I just think when it stops halfway, it just kind of looks like a track tome maybe and like a, like a cookie cutter, like one size fits all. It doesn't look very custom. And the stick on tiles, they come like, it's like four rows of tiles. So instead of having to do each individual tile and grout it and get it all messy, you just peel the back off, you lay it on the wall, and you fit the next one in next to it, and it looks great. The next hack is all about using mirrors to add symmetry to your space. A lot of the time, builders place windows on a home based on what it looks like on the outside. They want it to look symmetrical on the outside of the building, and then, Walls go up on the inside of the house and it just so happens that sometimes a wall goes up right next to a window and it's now a window in the corner of a room without another window to balance it and it's like lopsided and weird and funky and apparently builders, some builders just don't care. So if you happen to have a room with an off-sided window that's not balanced and not symmetrical, this hack is for you. If you look at the guest room that I had at the San Diego house, there was a random little window in the corner and then nothing on the left side. I had a bed up against that wall. I put window treatments along that wall, kind of going on the outside of one window, all the way over to the other side, and I put a mirror that is the same height as the window and about the same width as the window. Ideally, if you have a mirror that is the exact same width as that window, that'd be great, but as long as it's the same height and generally the same shape as the window, you will trick your eye to actually thinking that you have two symmetrical windows on either side of your bed or wherever it happens to be in your room. It also adds it, makes it brighter, makes it more beautiful, and it looks like you have a symmetrical situation going on when sometimes you don't. The next hack would be utilizing Facebook Marketplace. If you like the biblical chic vibe that I'm going for with the cottage, here's some good words to search. Primitive, early American, English pine, pine, vintage pine, antique. So putting those keywords in with dresser, vintage pine dresser, or early American table, or primitive cabinet, whatever. Those are some great keyword searches that'll bring up types of furniture that you guys can find for a steal of a deal. Take a buddy with you and you go to pick it up or send your husband. And yeah, I think it's a great resource to find decor. I actually found a saddle. Sawyer's Roundup birthday party, I wanted to have a saddle on hay and I didn't want to spend a ton of money and I found a saddle, paid like 30 bucks for it. So check out Facebook Marketplace. You can find all the deals there, all kinds of random stuff people are getting rid of and you'd be amazed at like all the treasures you can find, especially if you're into this like more vintage style. A lot of people when they have like estate sales, they just need to get the stuff out of the house because they want to sell the house and they just put it on Facebook Marketplace for like a dollar or come pick it up. If whoever can pick this up first wins it kind of a thing. So you never know what you'll find. Now hack number six is finding beautiful art prints online that you can print yourself. This is a great habit to get into because if you have a lot of different frames that you like that are empty or maybe it's like a weird picture like you guys saw when I went, went antiquing, some of them had like that Crisco recipe or whatever, definitely not gonna use that art print but I loved the frame. Well what I like to do is go on Etsy, there's other platforms I think also, um, oh gosh, what's it called? Um, 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 Society6 sometimes has this, where you can buy downloadable art prints, you can print them out at home, oftentimes they give you like a PDF and it has all different sizes of each print, so you could do a 5x7 or an 11x14 or whatever you want to do. You could take it to Kinko's, is Kinko's a thing anymore? Never heard of Kinko's? Staples, maybe Kinko's is a West Coast thing. FedEx print, whatever it's called. And then you put it in a frame yourself and it's a great way to get big art for a lower price point because big art can be expensive. Speaking of big art, a lot of you guys wanna know where this thing is from. This is like one of my most asked questions and this lovely art print is actually from Minted. Now I will tell you, 
I would not classify this as being cheap. It was not cheap, it was a good price. However, for what it is, for the size of it, it is very affordable. I wanna say this is like 50 by 40 or maybe 65 by 40 or something inches. When you're looking at that size art, you're often well into the thousands, multiple thousands. And I believe this guy was under a thousand. Check out places like Minted for large, large art. Look at places like Etsy to print out your own pieces of art. And you can also switch them out for the seasons too. So that's kind of fun. You keep the same frame, switch out new prints, save some money, but have new fun, cool vibes all year long, depending on your season. Hack number seven is all about remote light bulbs. Okay. You don't have an outlet or you don't have a hard wireable situation, not to worry. They make bulbs now that are battery operated. In fact, I bought some for the Stone Cottage. I'll link the ones that I bought and you guys can check them out, but they are great. They are have a little remote. You screw the, batter, the bulb in just like a regular bulb and you can turn the light on or turn the light off and you do not need power in the wall whatsoever. They're brilliant. They're amazing for rentals. They're amazing for budget-friendly spaces. And if you just, sometimes you just want a quick fix, you want to try something new, you want to explore your style and put sconces next to your bed. There's little to no commitment when you don't have to add the electrical in it. You can just put the light fixture up, screw in a battery-operated bulb, and you're good to go. All right, number eight is 3M Velcro strips. But the Velcro strips are like next level game changers because the 3M stuff doesn't take the paint off, right? You can take those stickers off easily by stretching the little thing on the end when you want to remove them. When you do the hooks, you know, you can only add so many, there's only enough space for so many. When you do Velcro, you could do like up to five or 10 pounds, but you could add four of them on the back of a frame and squish it onto the wall and it's just like stable. It's an amazing thing to have that and also that sticky putty. I didn't make that a hack, but that's a good thing to have in your back pocket. You get some of that sticky putty and you kind of peel a piece off and stick it on underneath each corner of the frame and you level it and make sure it sticks on and, it, and it'll stay. It won't move. So there you go. A twofer. Two and one. Number nine is all about paint pens. Now these are really great to have on hand. A lot of the time if you're moving, if you have toddlers, if you have dogs, things get nicked and chipped and bonked and booped and having a pen will really help. Now if you have dark, dark, dark furniture, you can actually use a Sharpie. I know, crazy. In a pinch, a really desperate time, you could use a Sharpie marker. But I also recommend just go to, they have like stain pens, you can get them at Home Depot, and um, they have them usually in all different types of wood. It's a great thing to have, uh, and it's just a quick fix and something that takes very little time and just sits in your drawer. And last but not least, our last hack of this video, number 10, utilizing all of your space, all the nooks and crannies. This is more of an organizing one, but it was well worth mentioning because I think a lot of the time, when, if you live in a studio space or a small apartment or you're in college or you just need more storage in your bedroom, the thing that takes up the biggest space in your, even in a living room or a bedroom, is the sofa or the bed, right? It takes up the biggest amount of floor space. If you guys can utilize your under bed storage, like that is the, you don't necessarily need another dresser, you don't need a, a shoe organizer, you just need your bed up enough to fit those long rolly bins Underneath your bed, you can throw your boots in them. I used to throw my sweaters in those and I would roll it underneath my bed and utilize all of that storage underneath because there is really great floor real estate under your bed that you're not using. And then also challenge yourself to think about your wall space. That's the other surface that's hardly ever used in a closet. Putting nails in the wall, hanging stuff on the wall as opposed to having it organized on your floor space if you have a smaller space is a genius idea and just trying to find ways to organize up and not necessarily stacking it on the floor, using it on the walls. You'll stay organized and it frees up your walkways and allows for you to move around nicely while keeping your stuff organized and in place. That was just an extra put in your back pocket. There you go. And since I'm in the mood to give you some extra tips, just randomly, you know, random ones. Ready, here we go. If your towels smell disgusting, like, you know, sometimes you leave them in the, in the washer and you forget. Three days later, you're like, oh yeah, I think I had towels in the washer. And then you try to put them in the dryer and they reek, they smell sour. Go to the store, get yourself some distilled vinegar, white vinegar, and throw that in the bucket, a big cup of it, 
and wash your towels again with vinegar, and I swear, which is like kind of counterintuitive, because it's like vinegar stinks. So why in the world would vinegar make my towel smell better? But it does. It will suck the smell out of any of those sour towels. I, I think it would work on like gross workout clothes or if your kids are in sports. Vinegar removes the scent. So make sure you use vinegar on your towels. Okay, another hack. Oh, clean your wedding ring. My aunt taught me this. Get yourself a baby food jar, a little glass jar. Put your wedding ring in there and just pour some Windex in there. She learned this from her jeweler, it's totally safe. But you let your ring sit in Windex overnight and then you scrub it off in some hot water. You don't have to put soap in it, you don't have to microwave it, I've seen different versions of this. All she told me to do, all she did forever and ever and ever was Windex in a baby food jar and it will make your ring sparkle more than you have ever seen. You don't have to buy the jewelry cleaner, you don't have to buy any of that stuff. Just an old toothbrush and some Windex and your ring will never be more beautiful ever. You're gonna love it. And last but not least, the most random hack of them all. If you have faux plants, if you're just like not a good plant person, you just can't keep them alive, I'm one of those people right now. I have seasons of my life. When I was single or newly married, no kids, I kept plants alive like nobody's business. I was great at it. But I can't keep a child, two children, a dog, a husband, myself alive, and run a business and worry about plants. I just can't keep them, something's gotta give. So for me, my plants are what gave, and I don't have a lot of real plants around this house anymore. So my faux plants have become my new best friends. The best way to make your faux plants feel and look real is to add real dirt to your faux plants. Now if you have small plants, you don't really have to do this if you put them in like a pot or something cutesy up on a shelf, doesn't really matter. This works really well with a big plant, like a faux fiddle tree or something. If it's in a substantial pot, put some real dirt there on top on your fake tree and it will make it look even more real because there's real dirt on it. And who, what idiot would put real dirt on a fake tree? <laughs> Not you. Well, yes, you, but you know, people are gonna think that you're genius because from afar, it's gonna look really real. Okay, you guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope this was a fun little hacky video of some top tips, top things that I live by that have changed my life. They are great tools to improve your space. I hope that you guys try them. And if you have any other secretive ones that I have not mentioned, hey, share the wealth. I'd love to read about them. So put them in the comment section below. Thumbs up this video, hit the subscribe button, and I will see you guys next time. Thank you for watching. Love you all. Mwah. Have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye. So FedEx bought Kinko's in 2004. FedEx bought Kinko's in 2004? Oh my gosh. Kinko's went bye-bye in 2004? That seems like forever ago. What year is it? That's 20 years ago. I am so old. Maybe there was like a slow. Yeah, let's hope it was like, like a, slow brand like a ten, 10 to 15 year phase slow out. phase out. Does anyone have a Kinko's still in their neighborhood? Is it like Blockbuster? They're just gone? Or is it like FedEx, parentheses, Kinko's? I feel like that's what they did. I feel like I remember seeing that. Okay, moving on.